composers to create interactive pieces of music. They did this with a very clever game. It consisted of a large assortment of individual measures of music, all numbered. Players rolled dice, and depending upon the numbers they rolled, the music was put into a particular order. Now the final result was a piece of finished music that seemed to be completely original to whoever had rolled the dice. These musical dice games were enormously popular. Even in the 18th century, people loved the sensation of interacting with a piece of music, of being able to have power over it, to change it into something new. Now that brings us to our first model of musical interactivity that we're going to discuss. It's called horizontal resequencing. In a lot of ways, horizontal resequencing is very similar to that musical dice game we were just talking about. The music for a horizontal resequencing model is recorded in the audio file format, and then it's constructed in segments or chunks so that it can be arranged and rearranged into different orders. Essentially, it can be resequenced. Now, we call it horizontal resequencing because we picture time as a horizontal phenomenon flowing from left to right, like the notes on a staff of music. So when we switch the order of musical chunks, we're altering their position in time, which we perceive to be horizontal. So now let's examine a fairly straightforward horizontal resequencing model as it was used in one of my own projects, the Speed Racer video game from Warner Brothers Interactive. In Speed Racer, players get to drive futuristic cars at over 350 miles per hour down Hot Wheels-style tracks that twist into loop-de-loops and impossible curves. Every so often, players can enter what's called a zone mode, during which they're suddenly invincible and they're traveling much, much faster than normal. The game used horizontal resequencing to enable musical interactivity during the zone mode. Let's look at the component musical files in Pro Tools so that we can see how the interactive chunks fit together. Every piece of racing music in the game had to be able to transition into its corresponding zone mode. You can see here the main piece of racing music crossfaded into the zone mode track, which was always 15 seconds long. Once the 15 seconds had elapsed, the main piece of racing music would pick up seamlessly. Let's listen to the music first by itself. <laughs> Okay, now let's see how that worked in the game. enters zone mode. The music smoothly transitions into the zone mode track. The two pieces of music were designed so that their tempos and their beats could be synced and that they would align well throughout those transitions. Now, how can these sorts of transitions be accomplished? One common way is to place digital markers in the music files, dropping them in locations that would make good switching points from one interactive piece of music to another. We might drop markers on every beat, making it possible to switch anywhere in a measure of music as long as the tempo was aligned. Or we might drop markers at the start of every measure, and the music wouldn't switch until the beginning of the next measure. We might even choose specific moments within the musical composition for the dropping of those markers, and the music wouldn't switch until those designated moments had been reached. 